today I'm going to review the Sony A6500. Stay tuned. When I first bought the Sony A6500, I got it because it was a mirrorless camera that shot 4K and worked extremely well in low light conditions. I love to shoot in low light. I thought it would be as simple to use as the iPhone, but I was wrong. And I now approach this thing like it's a moon rock. I, I really don't even know. I've had this camera for a year, and I'm still not certain how to use it. If you're looking for a camera that's easy to use, and it's straightforward, and it's very easy to understand, this is not the camera for you. There's a huge learning curve on this camera with all kinds of menus and sub-menus. And what I'm going to do is to illustrate this, I'm going to show you how to set up touch focus on the camera screen to show you how confusing and how complex it is just to get to this one function of the camera. When you hit the menu button on the back of the camera, it's going to bring up six other menus on the screen. And each menu is kind of like a filing cabinet. Within each filing cabinet are subfolders. For instance, on this one, folder six, you've got seven subfolders. So as I had said, there's a huge learning curve on this camera. There's a lot you've got to learn. You almost have to take a class to learn how to use each folder, what's within each folder, and, and how each folder affects the camera. It's very convoluted. It's not straightforward. It's very non-intuitive. Extremely confusing. To me, it was anyway. If you're somebody like myself that needs things written out step by step, I mean, I've had, this, I've had this camera for a year, and I've had to go through YouTube after YouTube after YouTube tutorial how to figure out how to work this camera because the owner's manual just didn't cut it for me. Now, when I first got the camera, I kept touching the screen thinking it would automatically focus once I touched the screen like you do on an iPhone, but it's not that simple. You've got to go into all these submenus to get that option to work. First, you push on the menu button. Then you go to page 8 of the first tab, because there's 14 pages on the first tab. You go to, page, you go to tab 8, then scroll down to metering mode, and change it to spot standard. So you're going to change the metering mode to spot, spot standard. And then you're going to change spot metering to focus point link. This will allow you to see a small circle on the screen when you tap it to see what exactly it is you're focusing on. Their circle will move with the focus. Now I'm going to tap on my high university mug there and you can see a little circle. It's really hard to see because I record the rest of this with my iPhone. And then I'll tap on the guitar and the guitar will go in focus when you tap on there. See right there in the fretboard it's more in focus and I'll tap back on the coffee mug and that should go more in focus. And then I'll tap back on the guitar here in a second. It's a little bit slow to respond. But the whole point to this is, once you get it set up, it's set up. But I had no idea how this worked. When I first got this camera, I'm telling you, there are so many menus and submenus and menus and submenus and folders. And you can set things up so they're automatically set up. But... This is not a camera for a beginner. This is not somebody, if you're just starting to shoot photography and you've never shot video, um, this is not the camera for you. I definitely would not recommend this camera for a beginner. The nicest thing I can say about this camera, it has phenomenal um, quality and low light. The colors are magnificent. I've shot some still photography with it and the pictures look crisp and clean. But it's a very non-intuitive, awkward camera. If you're just beginning, even for me, who's been shooting pictures for over 10 years, this is a really complex camera to handle. My primary camera for shooting photography is my Nikon D300S. This Sony A6500, I still approach it like it's a moon rock. I just am very uncomfortable around it. There's too many menus. There's too many things to click. I believe that a camera should be simplest, simplistic. I believe a camera should be simplistic. You should be able to pick it up know kind of intuitively how it works and then start using it. This camera is not like that until you've used it and used it and used it. You'd have to use this camera all the time. Another bad thing about this camera is the battery life, especially when shooting video, is horrible. 
at the most, you'll get maybe 20 minutes out of each battery. I've got three batteries that cost me $50 a piece. And so that's $150 worth of batteries to give me 60 minutes of shoot time. So there's low shoot time. It's a complex camera, huge learning curve. I hope you like this video. I hope it helps you out. If you're an advanced photographer and you're familiar with Sony products, this may be a better camera for you. I'm not familiar with Sony. I shoot Nikon usually. But if I had a choice, if an iPhone could make a camera that worked well in low light and had interchangeable lenses, they'd be amazing. Amazing, straightforward, understandable camera. If you like this video, give it the thumbs up. Subscribe. Tell your friends. Scream it from the rooftops about Skinny Bear Studios. Hope you liked it. Have a good day. Take care. Bye.